title of my sermon is Golden Calf Religion. Golden Calf Religion. And what I want to talk about today is just the motivation behind Israel in making the Golden Calf. And also what, what led them up to deciding to make the Golden Calf. Because it wasn't just one day, it just happened. It was a path that they began to walk on, which eventually led them to making the Golden Calf. And, um, and how was it allowed to happen? And also, lastly, is um, what, how was it dealt with? Or how did Moses deal with it? So they're the four things I sort of want to look at as we go through today. So turn in your Bibles, firstly, to Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. Revelation 10 and verse 10. And it says, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey, and as soon as I would eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Thanks, Georgia. So we can see there that... Um, so the angel gave unto the Apostle John a little book, which is a picture of the Word of God. And he ate that, that book, and it became, after he ate it, it became bitter. But before that, it was sweet and became bitter. And he had to prophesy those words. So we can see there that the Word of God is sweet, and it's also, it can be bitter. All right? And um, we need to receive both. Like, John was to preach both. He was, he was supposed to preach the sweet and Amen. the bitter. Okay? And we need Amen. to receive both if we're going to be balanced Christians. Amen. So turn to, uh, turn to Exodus chapter 29. Exodus chapter 29. And while, you're re- uh, while you're turning there, let me read to you uh, from 2 Timothy chapter 3. So you're turning to Exodus 29. I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, For instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It says there all scripture, not just the sweet of the scripture, not just the bitter, not just the smooth words of the scripture, but all scripture is given for inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. So it's the bitter of the word of God that causes you to be reproved, uh, to be rebuked. And, um, And if we receive both, if we receive all scripture... Then, and only then, can the man of God be made perfect. Okay, if we just balance, if we add a balance for the Word of God, and we just listen to the sweetness, um, the good stuff in the Word of God that's appealing to, to man, we're not going to be a, a complete uh, man of God, or a woman of God, whatever the case, may, yeah. case may be. We need both. We need the bitter and the sweet of the Word of God. And I want to give an example in the Bible, in the New Testament, before we get into the Old Testament. So turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. So we can see there already that the word of God is both sweet and bitter. And we need to receive both if we're going to be um, a mature man of God. So we can see an example here in, in John 6 where you've got people following Jesus because of his, the sweet preaching. Okay, So he's done the miracles, he's turned uh, water into wine, he's also fed the 5,000 already. And this has drawn like some massive crowds. Thousands of people are following Jesus. Because they, they, they're excited about the miracles, they're excited about all the um, exciting things that are happening in Jesus' ministry. And then we see Jesus starts to bring some hard teaching in the Word of God, or some, some of the bitter teaching in the Word of God, and it causes these people to be offended. So let's just have a look at, at verse uh, 53 of John chapter 6. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink, in, drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. So he goes on to preach about how they needed to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, and they were offended. It was a hard saying. They couldn't receive it. And many of them turned away and stopped following Jesus. So when he was just preaching smooth words, exciting things, and miracles were happening, that was all fantastic. But when he started to preach some challenging sermons, some hard preaching, if you like, they were offended and turned away. So jump down to uh, verse 60. 
Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard, when they had heard this saying, said, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? So it was some hard preaching. And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Okay, jump down to uh, verse 66. It says, from, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? So Jesus is no respectable person. So he's not trying to treat the crowd different to how he treats his, his friends and his, and his close yeah. disciples. So he's no respectable person. So he says to them, If you guys can't receive my preaching, if you guys can't receive the hard preaching of my word, do you also want to go away? And Simon Peter answered him and said, And our Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and assure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Peter didn't say, well, that, that wasn't hard preaching. Like, it was hard preaching to Peter, but he said, well, it is hard. That's, that's a hard sermon. It's a hard saying. But I know that you have the words of life. I need to receive what you have to say. So Peter received the sweet and the bitter. And so, so do we. Okay, so we can see there, the word of God is sweet. And it's better. There's the, the smooth words and there's the hard preaching of God's word. We need to receive both. Like, for example, when you first hear the gospel and you believe it, that's sweet. Mm. Like that's, that's fantastic. That's good news that you're saved by yeah. faith without works. A free gift, that's amazing. And you can receive that. That's sweet. But then after you start to walk with God, you, you go to church and you start to hear some hard preaching and you find out that God hates sin. That I have to change. It can't stay living in sin, you know, I can't stay smoking cigarettes or, or getting drunk, and that can be a bit bitter. And then you can make it, got to make a choice: am I going to continue on and uh, grow and, and change and be a disciple, or am I going to just fall away at that point? So it can become bitter, and it's how we respond to the to the word of God. But as we read before, all Scripture is profitable, the, the bitter right. and the sweet. And if we want to be mature, we need to receive both. All right, I do want to give you an example of this in, in the Old Testament. Uh, so turn to uh, Exodus chapter 29. Exodus chapter 29. And verse 15. And thou shalt also take one ram... And Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram, and thou shalt slay the ram. And thou shalt take his blood and sprinkle it around about the altar, which sounds like Jesus, that's a picture of of Jesus. Thou shalt cut the ram in pieces and wash the innards of him and his legs and put them under his pieces and under his head. And thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savour, an offering made by fire, Unto the Lord. So we can see there the whole ram had to be offered on the altar. And it was only when the whole ram was offered that it was a sweet savour unto the Lord. So it's a picture, I believe, an old Old Testament shadow or picture of the Word of God, how when you receive the whole Word of God, in there they had to wash the innards, like the guts of the ram, which wouldn't, wouldn't have been pleasant. They could have discarded that, but no, they had to include that as well. It was only they, after they offered the whole ram, even the innards, which is sort of not nice, not pretty, was when it was received as a sweet savour unto the Lord. So they had to offer the whole ram on the altar, even the good parts and the bad parts. So that's an Old Testament picture also. And likewise today, we need to receive the whole word of God if we want to be pleasing unto the Lord and, and grow. Turn to Exodus chapter 19. While turning there, I just want to read to you from Isaiah chapter 30. So you're turning to Exodus chapter 19, and I want to read to you from Isaiah chapter 30. And we're going to see here, God's going to describe the children of Israel, what they're like. This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that would not hear the law of the Lord. We say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And we're going to see later that Israel certainly tried to do that. Wherefore, thus saith the the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness, 
and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. So we can see there that Israel were wanting to only hear the smooth words, the smooth preaching, and they wanted to, to, to turn God away from them so they could, wouldn't have to hear the law of the Lord. And so they didn't want to hear all scripture. They just wanted to have their own preferences. They just wanted to hear the smooth words and they're already trying to, if you like, make steps towards forming their own golden calf or how they wanted God to be. They said, we don't want to hear the law of the Lord, but we just want to hear the smooth preaching. And that's what they were trying to establish uh, in, in those days. And we can see that was definitely the case uh, in, uh, in Exodus later on in chapter 32. So they didn't want to hear Romans chapter 1. They didn't want to hear the hard preaching as marriage and, and divorce. They just wanted to hear all the smooth stuff that God loves you, got a great plan for your life, and he wants you to prosper. And that sort of preaching will bring thousands of people. Now, Jesus had thousands of people following him when he was doing miracles and, and blessing them with, with free food and all that sort of stuff. But they don't want to hear the hard preaching. So we have to be a church that's not afraid to preach all scripture, the bitter oh, yeah. and, and the sweet. Yeah. So you're in Exodus 19, turn to verse 9. And I just want to go through the story now of what led up to uh, Israel making the golden calf. I do want to read uh, uh, quite a few verses there just so we can get the full picture. And I'll uh, start at verse 9 there. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today, and tomorrow I, and, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds upon unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not be an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So true preaching of God's word is going to cause you both to rejoice, be happy, um, celebrate the word of God, but it also is going to cause you to tremble. So up until this point, the children of Israel had not heard too much hard preaching. They had not seen the glory and greatness of God like they had here. And for the first time, they're starting to tremble. They're starting to realise God's not just a God that just attacks the Egyptians, but blesses us and does miracles for us. He's also a God that is fearful and great and holy, and they started to tremble. Amen. And good balanced preaching, a good diet, if you like, of preaching will cause you both to tremble about the holiness of God and about sin, and also cause you to rejoice. So we need to have, have both. And they were quite shocked when they saw this side of God, that they feared greatly. And Moses, verse 17, And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the never part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto them, Get it away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spoke unto them. So we can see here, Israel is really seeing a lot more of God than they hadn't seen before. And um, God is growing them, taking them further, and, and they're just seeing much more of God. And, um, and the way they responded to that wasn't good. They could have responded in a way 
uh, they, could, they, should have, they should have trembled, but at the same time they should have embraced fully who, who God was and uh, not backed away from that. So we're going to see over in Exodus chapter 20, verse 19, where the cracks first start to show. So turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 19. says there, And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. So they said, they're happy to hear Moses speak to them, but they says, but let not God speak with us. So they didn't like this hard preaching. They didn't like just seeing the glory and the greatness of God. So they were saying, look, we don't want to hear God speak to us. We don't want to hear the side of God. We, Moses, you, you go and hear the hard preaching, and we'll hear you, but, don't, but we don't want to experience that part of God anymore, lest we die. And really, they weren't going to die. That was just an excuse they made up. They weren't, they weren't going to die. And um, verse 20, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye said not. So Moses is saying, Fear not, you're not going to die. You know, God's not coming to kill you. It's coming to put the fear of God in you that you sin not. And that's what hard preaching does. That's what the bitter of the word of God, the, um, the, the grace and, and uh, not the, the, the glory and the, and the greatness of God is to cause you to be fearful and not sin. To fear God and not sin. That's why we have hard preaching so that we, we're not fearful of work, so we don't sin rather. And just turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 5. And this is um, years later, Moses is retelling the story. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 5, verse 24. Uh, Deuteronomy 5, verse 24. So Deuteronomy 5, chapter 5, verse 24. So this is uh, Moses retelling the story. And he said, Behold, the Lord our God have showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire, and we have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more. Then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that have heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near, hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak unto, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. So again, we can see there that they didn't want to hear the harp preach, and they didn't want to hear God himself speaking. They were happy just for Moses to do it. And they stood there, and we will hear it and do it. Which they didn't do it. They were lying. But they had no intention at all, of all, at all of doing it. Okay, Hebrews 12. Turn to Hebrews 12, chapter 19. And now we see the story in the New Testament. So we're just looking at the lead up to the children of Israel making the golden calf. So Hebrews chapter 12, this is a famous chapter, famous story. Hebrews 12, 19. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice... They that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And as so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. So even Moses, he was fearful and he was full of fear and he quaked at, at God's word, at hearing God speaking. And the difference here between Moses... And the people is that Moses was a great leader, a great man of God. He didn't, didn't say, look, I don't want to hear God, I don't want to hear you speak to me anymore, God. But he still wanted to receive the bitter as, as well as the sweet. And the way he responded is the way that we should respond and the way that the children of Israel should have responded. He said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But he, he continued on with God. He didn't, he didn't shy away from God. It says there, verse 20, For they could not endure that which was commanded. A lot of people today, they can't endure that which is commanded in, in the Word of God, the hard preaching. Okay, we need to receive that if we want to grow up and be a complete man of God, a perfect man of God. See, Moses was also fearful, just like the people were. And even like Peter was in, in John 6, he couldn't understand the hard preaching, but he still received it and uh, moved on with Jesus as a disciple. So let's turn to our Bible reading chapter now, so Exodus chapter 32. 
So we can see the build up there that the people are starting to shy away from the hard preaching. They're starting to shy away from being exposed to the, the, um, the glory and the greatness of God because it's causing so much fear that they don't want to deal with that. So I say, Moses, we don't want to deal with that. You deal with that. You, you, you go before God and have God speak to you and you come back and tell us. And that's okay. We'll, we'll, do, we'll deal with it that way. So that's what they wanted to happen. So Exodus 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves unto, uh, together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. So first of all there, you can see that Moses delayed. Moses delayed. So he's been up there for 40 days, 40 nights on the mountain, and the people are starting to panic. So we'll, we have this deal with Moses that we're going to hear from Moses, and therefore that's going to save us from having to hear God himself. So Moses has been up there for 40 days, and they're starting to be fearful. What's become of Moses? What's going to happen to us? You know, we're going to have to deal with this God all by ourselves. And we can see here that Moses, which was... He was a strong leader. He was like the, their pastor. Because we know that Israel was like the church in the wilderness. So in a sense, they're, they're a, one big church. And Moses is a pastor. So Moses, being a strong leader, while well, he's up on, on the mountain, they're, they're, they're leaders away. Okay? And then, I guess the second in charge is, is Pastor Aaron. Or, or Deacon Aaron. Okay? And he's not a strong leader. So here we see two leaders. Moses, the strong leader. And Aaron, a weak leader. And they feel quite comfortable going to Aaron and saying to Aaron, make us gods. Mm. They wouldn't go to Moses. There's no way they would go to a strong leader like Moses and say, look, make us gods, Moses. Moses would not have a bar of that, but he's gone. So the good leader's gone, and Aaron's there by himself, and he's a weak leader, and the people go to Aaron, and they say to him, up, make us gods. So Aaron, he should have said, no, we're not making any golden calves. Okay, it's the same today when these strong leaders in churches today that are going to say, no, we're not going to read the NIV. No, we're not going to read the Message Bible. No, we're not going to soften our stand on marriage and divorce. No, we're not going to bring in a rock band. No, we're not going to bring in tight, skinny jeans. No, we're not going to bring in um, <coughs> strobe lights and a, and, a, and a smoke machine. When these strong leaders are going to stand on the Word of God and not budge at all, like a weak leader will go, oh, okay, maybe we can just sometimes... Yeah. Read the NIV. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a bit of a smoke machine every now and then just to just impress the young people. But we need a strong leader like Moses. Okay, so this all happened when strong leadership wasn't in place. The strong leader is away, and all this sin and compromise comes in because Aaron. Look, Aaron wasn't a false prophet, he was just a weak leader. He just wasn't a strong leader, and he was influenced by the people. So looking at another strong leader who had had, had a similar, similar heart to, to Moses is the Apostle Paul. So just jump over quickly to Acts 20. Acts 20, verse 26. So this is the Apostle Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. Acts 20, verse 26. So keep your finger there, definitely, in... Uh, Exodus chapter 32, we'll be back there in a minute. It says, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So here's Paul, he's preaching all scripture, all counsel of God, the good and the, and, and the bitter, the sweet and the bitter. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. So Paul knew he was a strong leader, and Paul being there, the church of Ephesus, was stopping all these false teachers from creeping in, all this heresy from creeping in, but he knew that when he left, there's going to be no strong leader to replace him. There's going to be no one else as strong as, as him, as he was, to keep all this uh, heresy and whatnot away. He might have been thinking maybe 50 years, 100 years in the future, when weak, weaker leaders start to come through, all these, all these false teachings and, and wicked men are going to creep in. And it's the same with Moses. As soon as Moses wasn't in at church, as soon as Moses was off on the mountain with God for 40 days, all these stuff started to creep in, all this... Um, 
compromise and and um, great uh, great sin started to creep in. So you'll turn back there in uh, Exodus chapter thirty-two, and this also goes to show why the uh, qualifications for a pastor are so strict. Because a pastor yeah. needs to be a strong man of God, like Moses, not like Aaron. Aaron maybe he was a bit younger; he was a, a novice, didn't have much ex- experience leading such a, a large group of people, and hadn't spent enough time learning from Moses, and he and he failed. He failed in in, in his test to be uh, yeah. the assistant pastor or the, or the two I see while Moses was away. So that's why we need pastors who are strong men of God that can stand firm on the word of God and we can't dumb down the qualifications for a pastor. Even though it can be hard to find men to, to be pastors, that doesn't mean we can dumb down the qualifications Amen. because yeah. the result will be weak, lame, soft, compromising churches. Mm-hmm. You're better off having uh, no churches that are going to be compromising churches, turning people into following um, uh, golden calves. Uh, verse 2. And Aaron said unto the people, Oh, bring me the message Bible. Bring me the snake machine. Bring me the pop music. So that's what he said that he came. He said, yeah, bring it all in, guys. Bring it in. I, I really said, break off the golden earrings, which are in the, in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings, which are in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. So it says that he made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. So you can notice there one thing is that they didn't say, Oh, we don't care about the Lord anymore. We just want to follow Baal or Moloch or one of these other false gods. They still wanted to follow the God, because it says here that this, uh, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So they still said, well, this is still the true God, but he's now going to be worshipped as golden calf. Okay, that's what they're trying to do. So they're trying to add to, to the word of God, if you like. But so now, God's now a golden calf, and we can worship this golden calf, which would have been a hangout which they had um, from um, Egypt. You know, they would have worshipped golden calves and all sorts in Egypt, and they carried that with them, that idea. And also, they made a god after their own prosperity. So they draw from all their, their riches, from their, their gold, and they made this, this gold, golden calf, which is going to be like a god of prosperity to them. And that's, it's not going to be a god that's going to cause them to fear and to quake and to, to tremble. It's going to, go, it's going to be a god that's going to bless them. They're going to just play, eat, drink, and be merry. And that's the sort of god they wanted. And that's why they made this golden calf. And they said, well, this is the God. This is the God that brought us out of Egypt. But at the same time, he's not the God, the God that um, Moses showed us on the mount. We don't want to worship that, that God. So we've just got this golden calf now. Uh, verse 6. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. That's what they really wanted to do. They wanted a God that would just allow them to eat and drink and, and rise up to play. That's what they wanted. They didn't want the real God. They wanted a God that would just give them exactly what they wanted, all their preferences, and that's why they made this golden calf. And a lot, a lot that goes on today in Pentecostal churches, charismatic churches, is just golden calf religion. Yeah. That's all it is. It's people yeah. who have rejected the hard preaching, yeah. rejected the, the tough preaching in the Word of God, the bitter, and all they want is the smooth stuff. That's all they want. And they made, all they've done, they've made a golden calf. And so, well, this is the God that saved us. But he doesn't want us to have to turn from our sins. He doesn't want us to live holy lives. He doesn't want us to have to go out there and do door knocking and preach the gospel and actually do something. All we want to do is just eat and drink and rise up and play. That's all we want to do. It's the same thing that goes on today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. <coughs> Soul winning is, is too bitter. Hard preaching is too bitter. And they explain away all the challenging, hard sayings in the Bible. Like, sure, women can be pastors. Paul just had a bad attitude towards women. You know, he just, yeah, don't listen to Paul. And, um, yeah, you've been married and divorced before. That's fine. You can get married again. That's just, you know, we won't even, we'll just ignore those scriptures. That's too hard. We'll just forget about that. And that's what goes on today. Yeah. People are actually worshipping another Jesus. It's yeah. a Jesus they've made after their own image, after their own likeness. Right. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. So I like how God says to, to Moses, Oh, your people, 
You're responsible for these people, Moses. You're their pastor. You're their leader. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get thee, get thee down, for thy people which thou brought us up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way. See, this seems to happen when you haven't got strong leadership. When you've got weak leadership, things turn bad quickly. They've turned quickly uh, out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. So then after that we know that Moses intercedes um, on, the, on behalf of the nation and God repents of uh, wiping them all out. So let's just pick it up in uh, verse 17. Just for sake of time, verse 17. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. So he's here with them just have a party. They're not fighting a battle. They're not training hard to be stronger people. They're just having a party. And Joshua's going, what is this that I hear? Like he hasn't heard them behave like this before. He's like, what is this I hear? Normally they're, they're fighting battles. They're, they're training. They're um, doing great exploits or what have you. But this time they're just singing. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger... Waxed hot. That's how you should respond to golden calves in churches. That's how you should respond to compromise in churches, to weak churches. You should respond in anger. Like if we see someone try to creep into this church bringing compromise and, and trying to say, you know, you need to read the NIV, there's problems with the King James Version, or we don't need to go door to door soul in the Woodlands Street letterbox, we need to be angry yeah. at that sort of stuff. Our anger ought to uh, wax hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and broke them before the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. So he's just mad. He's just gone crazy with righteous anger. I kind of like in this to just say a dad might catch their, their, their son smoking a cigarette. So you want to smoke cigarettes? Well, here's a whole packet. I'm going to sit here with you and smoke the whole packet. I don't recommend you do that. Like, this never happened to me. So I think he's like, if you want to worship a golden calf, here you go, drink it. Have your fill of this golden calf. That's what I, what I take of it. Okay, and then Moses turns his uh, sights on, on Aaron, which gets interesting. Verse 25. Now when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, oh, I missed a bit, sorry. Go back to um, verse 21. Sorry about that. Verse 21. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto, unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? Now Aaron, this would have been his chance to say, I'm sorry, Moses, I, I repent, I made a big mistake, the people just wore me out and I, I gave in, I shouldn't have done. That's, this is what he should have said right here, and this is his chance to put it right. But Aaron, Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot, thou knowest the people, that they are set on mischief. So he's saying, not my fault, it's the people's fault. You know what the people are like, Moses, they drive you nuts, they were just driving me nuts, not my fault. And they said unto me, Make us God, which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever have any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me, and I and listen to this. This is prophetic. And I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Moses, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it, Moses. You know, I, I, was, I said, oh, I'm sick of these people. Well, give me your gold. And I, I threw it in the fire, and out popped this golden calf. You wouldn't read about it, Moses. But it's, it says there that just you know back earlier it says there that that he made it that he crafted it yeah, like yeah, yeah. He, he made it he, he's just telling lies it's something like a five year old would say yeah. this is just prophetic you know Aaron just totally blew it he should have repented and he could have moved on yeah, it was just terrible full of compromise and that's what people that's what we need to do when we make mistakes now when God's word exposes us as being 
uh, in the wrong, we just need to humbly say that I was wrong. Yep. I, I repent. Yep. You know, if I was wrong about uh, the end times, now it's okay. That's right. Of course, we're not going to be be here for the wrath, or of course, we're not going to be. It's no pre true wrath. It's not true. You know, we just go. Like, yeah, no, I was wrong, mm. or I was wrong yeah. about uh, uh, Israel. You know, Israel's not God's chosen people anymore. Like anyone who believes in Jesus is. We just need to say, yeah, I was wrong. I remember um, when I first watched um, uh, Marching to Zion, because before that I believed that yeah, Israel today over there was still God's chosen people. So I thought, well, I watched the documentary, but I'm not going to change my mind. So I watched it and I listened to all the word, all the Bible that was quoted in the, in the DVD, and I thought, you know what, I'm wrong. I said, God, I'm wrong. And when I, you know, I've been wrong on speaking in tongues and things like that, and I thought, yep, wow, I'm wrong, God. Forgive me, I repent. Amen. You know, that's that's the, that's the response. You know, yeah. we don't want to double down, and um, if we do that, then we're going to be punished by God. Yeah. Just, uh, I'll just read you again something out of Isaiah chapter thirty. Just want to draw your attention to it. So, just just to remind you, these are the Israelites were saying, we don't want to hear the heart preaching. We don't want to hear. Um, we don't want to hear the law of the Lord being preached. I just want to hear smooth things. It says in verse 12, I'll just read it to you. It says, Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness, <coughs> and listen to this, and stay thereon. So these are people who he didn't repent when Isaiah came to them and preached this word, and they stayed thereon. So if we hear the truth and you're saved, and it's going to be stubborn, and you're going to stay thereon, in verse 13, 13, Therefore this inequity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly at an instant. So you're going to be disciplined harshly by the Lord if you're going to stay in your rebellion. If you're going to stay following after a golden calf, you're going to be punished severely by the Lord. But he does give us a lot of grace to repent before that. Yeah. Oh, where am I up to uh, verse uh, 20, 25 now. Now we're at verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. So a strong leader will draw a line in the sand. A strong leader will make it very clear where he stands. Okay, so if you're... In a church, you need a strong leader who's going to be not too scared to draw a, a line in the sand. It's exactly what Moses did. First of all, Moses exposed the golden calf. He didn't deal with it in a corner. He didn't try and just sweep it under the carpet and not make a big deal about it. And he wasn't worried who heard, who was listening, who, who was there. He didn't care if the um, Canaanites or the other nations nearby, if, if they heard about it, he, he didn't care. He just went straight after this golden calf and dealt with it head on. And that's how we need to deal with, with sin in our lives and compromising the church. And a strong leader will do that. And he drew a line in the sand and said, uh, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves unto him. Verse 27. And he said unto them, Love says the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in, and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbour. So again, Moses is no respect for persons. If you got caught up in this worship of this golden calf and then you wouldn't come back onto Moses' side or the Lord's side, you're going to die. Now you had no, no place for you any longer in this church. Okay? So Moses was ruthless, no compromise at all with, with false religion. And and the children of Israel did uh, Levi, sorry, the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. So Moses well and truly just hit this uh, thing head on and dealt with it. Okay, Moses an example of a strong leader. He did not sweep it under the carpet at all, and he didn't care who was involved. You're not going to be a part of that church any longer. In fact, you're going to be put to death. And it's the same today. We don't put people to death, but we don't compromise on the word of God. We, if, if, you know, God forbid if someone just changed gears and started believing the, the NIV was the best Bible, they're going to have to leave. 
You know, we'll say, well, if you're on our side, come over here to the King James where you're supposed to be. If not, you need to leave. Yeah. And that's the sort of uh, church we're in. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful to God that we've got a strong leader uh, like Moses in this regard. It's not going to compromise. Yeah. And someone comes in trying to teach oneness, trying to confuse people on, on doctrine, we're not going to have a part of it. We're drawing a line in the sand. And let me read to you from Titus chapter 3, verse 10. A man that is a heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. So we, that's how we deal with the golden calf religion or, or compromise that comes into our church. We deal with it ruthlessly. We give them one or two chances and then that's it. They're, they're gone. Yeah. You know, we don't compromise. And we don't sweep it in the carpet, but we just deal with it in front of the whole church, if, if need be. So that's all I had for you tonight. So I just want to remind you that the Word of God is both sweet and bitter, and we need to receive both. It's when we just start to pick the sweet and reject the bitter, then we start on the path towards a golden calf. Yeah, okay, so we need to make sure that we receive all Scripture. You know what I do? Whenever I buy a new Bible, you know how you buy a Bible, uh, you've only got the one ribbon? So I glue in two more ribbons, I put one in the Old Testament, or two in the Old Testament, and two in the New Testament, and try and just jump between the both and read all the scriptures. So we need to receive all scripture Amen. and make sure we, uh, that's why it's so good, we just uh, go through um, whole chapters in the Bible. We're not, we're not missing anything, you know. If we're just picking our favourites, we can lean towards just the sweet preaching, but we need to have both. If we have both, we're going to be a complete, uh, mature person of God, man of God, a woman of God, and we're not going to start going down that path for to uh, worshipping a, a golden calf. So that's what I have for you tonight. So. Amen. Amen.